in this video I want to say tell more about the so called grounded emitter circuit grounded emitter circuit with say one transistor here we have the positive lead That's of course important. Uh, positive lead, you have the negative lead. And in this way, with that positive and negative lead, we can, of course, negative is often, uh, say, connected to ground. In the past, say the 1970s, 1960s, the positive was connected to ground. <laughs> That doesn't matter much anyway. Um, it's very, very important that in all kinds of, say, uh, low energy circuits, we have a kind of decoupling unit. And also in, say, power units, uh, power amplifiers, etc., etc., be it for um, uh, the low frequencies, and the low frequencies go from say 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, the higher frequencies go from say uh, 20 kilohertz. To uh, say uh, 400 kilohertz. Anyway, uh, it's all more or less uh, RB, uh, RB traditional. Uh, anyway, um, the positive here, the negative here. Uh, this is with that resistor. That resistor is very important in a certain way. It limits the current that can flow into the preamplifier. Uh, so, when you want to use this for an end amplifier, uh, that's another issue. But I only publish here now, say, a kind of preamplifier, and in that case, we can use for this resistor, say, uh, 50 ohms up to 470 ohms is a good value and the smoothing capacitor say part of the decoupling unit is more or less always uh, bridged with a hundred nanofarad capacitor and say a resistor of that depends, of course, on the voltage, etc., etc. But anyway, uh, say 100K to 470K. So here we have, say, a kind of unit that is able to uh, push uh, disturbing frequencies from say a transmitter or whatever uh, out to ground and this capacitor is in general 100 microfarad minimum could also be 470 microfarad of course uh, it depends the voltage also depends on the supply voltage say we have here 12 volts and in such a case we can use here 25 volts anyway uh, the basic circuit of that one transistor amplifier and i make it here with an npm transistor so the pc 
547B. Uh, the basic circuit is here. And the most important thing often forgot on the World Wide Web and everywhere is that such a transistor needs a bias voltage. And that bias voltage is very specific. Uh, it depends a lot. So I use always use here a 25k potentiometer or a 22k potentiometer and here a resistor of 1k 1000 ohms to prevent that when we move the say wiper to the uh, upper position and there is no resistor here the transistor will immediately burn out. The amplification uh, of such a transistor stage is in general set by the relation between this resistor, say it's 3K3 or 2K2 that are practical values, and this resistor. And for say all the best properties use here a 1k potentiometer that's the best thing to do you can set the amplification between say the maximum amplification that such a transistor can give say 300 times and that's a lot and also this BF transistor surely can amplify say 120 times. Uh, you can test that with a transistor tester. This is one of my transistor testers that I use and there are many many more other transistor testers. The input and the output capacitor is in such a case very very important. Uh, for audio I always use non-polar capacitors going to the base and here so here in here out uh, say for audio one microfarad non-polar can surely do the job and also here one microfarad non-polar the reason that I use non-polar capacitors is that with an electrolytic there is always a kind of leak. So you see a lot of electrolytics. Uh, electrolytics leak a kind of say minimal um, current into the base of the transistor and when such a electrolytic gets old uh, you can test them by the way I've made test circuits on my youtube channel uh, when such an electrolytic gets old uh, a current starts to flow into the base of the amplifying transistor and that means that it gets out of its working point. So when it gets a too high current here, no longer related to the signal or the voltage that is sent in here, uh, it doesn't work any longer and uh, the circuit can be damaged. The transistor can be damaged. So anyway, for audio, this is a good value. 10 microfarad up to 22 microfarad for audio say uh, 20 kilohertz 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz this gives a good amplification factor uh, this capacitor plays a part in the say frequency dependent backcoupling when you study it on the world wide web and in electronics theory you can find much more information 
So for audio, one microfarad in, one one microfarad out, etc., etc. And here the pin connections. So let's now go to a typical other situation where we use this, say, grounded emitter circuit, not as a not as a audio amplifier, but I say high frequency amplifier. That's here. Uh, the BC547B can amplify up to approximately 9 MHz, but for a real high frequency application it's better to use this transistor, the BF199 amplifies approximately 100 times, 120 times, that's very good. Of course, in a high frequency amp amplifier, grounded emitter high frequency amplifier, we don't need electrolytics. Also, the input and output capacitors have to be changed and due to the higher frequencies they also must be of a much lower value. Say, we have here a BF199 as the uh, frequency dependent emitter uh, capacitor we use, for instance, a value between 10 nanofarads and 100 nanofarad, you have to do that experimentally. 100 nanofarad, for instance, works very good on, say, 450 kilocycles. Input and output capacitor also sets set the frequency band where such a high frequency uh, stage works. Say, we use here uh, 10 nanofarad, and also here 10 nanofarad. You can also use here, when you go to the lower frequency bands, say 400 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, you can use 100 nanofarad. And also here as output capacitor 100 nanofarad. And you can set the amplification due to the very, very good uh, current amplification factor of this transistor, the BF199, uh, you can get a very good uh, amplification. When you use a 3K3 resistor or a 2K2, and here that 1K. Of course, say, it, when everything is properly uh, uh, sort out and etc etc you can say replace this potentiometer by two fixed value resistors and also this one by two fixed value resistors because we know that such a potentiometer in fact consists of two resistors. Anyway, that was more or less all to tell. I hope it was a little bit uh, clear, etc, etc. I've used this circuit many times, uh, both for uh, high frequency units, uh, even for, say, circuits that work around 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, but I also used it for audio. So, perhaps it's interesting to go back again. My camera runs out. And of course, when you say uh, use this for an audio circuit, uh, it's always important to see where the positive and where the negative uh, is connected to. And in that case we use the BC 
547 and here we use an electrolytic of say 10, 10 microfarad to 22 microfarad and of course always important the decoupling stage anyway I hope it was a little bit uh, useful. Thanks for watching. The it's all about the one transistor. AF audio frequency or AF amplifier. And the, the whole circuit works very, very properly. I can assure that. <laughs>